president of Ghana, Professor Nanaku Fuado, has emerged as the new chairman of the Economic Community of West African State ECOWAS. He was elected president at the 57th ECOWAS Summit in Naimi, capital of Niger, on Monday. The Ghana Ministry of Information announced this via its verified Twitter handle. During the summit, President Mohamed Buhari warned ECOWAS leaders against elongating their tenure in office. Joining us now is Paul Ejime, a foreign affairs expert. Pleasure to have you join us on the news. A quick question. What impact will this appointment do to a Ghanaian president who is seeking re-election? Thank you, Felicia. Well, for him, it could be um, a way of, uh, if he could leverage it, perhaps, to, for his uh, re-election in um, uh, December uh, of this year. But um, really, there isn't much. Uh, he's only one year. And um, what if um, uh, he loses? Then um, the, the, the equation will also change. So for him, um, he has to maximize it. Uh, we understand that um, he was the only uh, president that showed interest of the eight that attended um, the Niamey um, uh, summit. So um, in that case, he has but again, it's becoming a, a fashion by ECOWAS. The, this happened in uh, 2018 when uh, President Buhari was also given the chairmanship of the authority when he had an election to fight in 2019. Uh, I think ECOWAS should look at it because it doesn't make for uh, concentration. There is so much to do in a country and then talk about um, getting 15 uh, member countries, which, which is uh, in, a, in, a, in a politically restive um, and um, uh, economically and socially unstable um, uh, region that ECOWAS is in. So it shouldn't be about personality, it should be about uh, the people. ECOWAS um, uh, Vision 2020 talks about um, ECOWAS of people, not of states. And you notice that in some states, they are actually appropriating some uh, governments uh, or presidents are appropriating uh, uh, states. Uh, hence, some of them are uh, seeking for, you mentioned the top term, uh, those that are 76 or even 82 years, uh, you know, uh, uh, Conde in uh, Alpha Conde in Guinea, um, Ouattara in, um, in, 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 um, in uh, Cote d'Ivoire. So ECOWAS is looking for leadership. I think that is what is clear, because um, the, the way they are handling some of the conflicts, even before they break out, does not show that um, the uh, early warning system that is supposed to um, guard against this thing, bring pre uh, preventive diplomacy is working. So they need to go back to the drawing board, look at how um, they can prevent and then manage conflicts so that it does not escalate and become um, a problem for the region. Um, for now, I don't think they are, they are getting it right, including in Mali. Uh, look at what is happening there. The military had to come in. Uh, nobody has the appetite for the military regime, but uh, the, the civilians are not uh, covering themselves in glory. And that is why in terms of governance, in terms of uh, the, the people's well-being, in terms of security and um, economic and social um, uh, amenities for the people. And that is why, you know, it, it becomes uh, perhaps inevitable that, uh, and again, you look at the fact that in, in Africa, it's not just about leadership. What about those who are being governed? Africans do not have the, the, you know, the, the determination, the commitment to continue with a struggle. Look at in the East. Look at um, uh, in Western world, rather. Look at America, for instance, where the um, Af um, African Life Matters has been on for more than 100 days. But in Africa, uh, after two weeks, people go back and then for, you know, and that is why politicians, they understand that. And they, they, are, they are really... Uh, uh, undermining the people's uh, interest by, by knowing well, if it is protest, maybe after two weeks, the people will go back to their normal African so should learn to be, to how to be we can change that to have narrative. that commitment to go ahead and, and ask for accountability from their leadership. Uh, we'll come to how to try and adjust that narrative in a bit, but let's talk about Nigeria's big brother role um, in the region. Uh, recently, there's been a frosty sort of relationship between Ghana and Nigeria. How do you think this will play out with um, Anana Akufuado being the ECOWAS uh, chair? Well, I think it's an opportunity for him to um, for rapproche more, to, you know, to come back to Nigeria. Nigeria and the Ghana, like I used to say, they constitute the, the highest number in terms of population. Nigeria has two, 200 million, Ghana about 31. 
and that is um, uh, compared to the whole ECOWAS is about three, 360 or 370 million. So the two of them must show leadership. Um, I think they are already talking after all the um, brinksmanship of uh, you know talking um, uh, the information ministers. They need to go back to the uh, back channel of diplomacy and look at how this. I think they have started that. The issue of trade up issue, uh, uh, you know, uh, harassment should uh, be resolved. And then the border closure. The issue is that well, Ghana says that all the trucks that they have, uh, they are locked. They, are, they can't move in uh, uh, because Nigeria has uh, closed the borders. This can be resolved through um, diplomatic channels without really coming out to flex muscles. I think um, Kofi, um, uh, the president of Ghana, has an opportunity to, um, you know, seek uh, the hands of uh, friendship with his um, uh, brother president. And then also Ghanaians and, and uh, Nigerians should also see that uh, they are watching the, the body language of their leaders Indeed, to take body, uh, a cue. Uh, um, and also let, them, very... let the normal friendly relations uh, resume. Uh, the body language is very, very important. Uh, you, you talked about it a bit, but I'd like you to expatiate some more. Uh, what would be Nana's direction, body language, if you please, towards the Mali's political turmoil? Well, as the saying goes, he has the job uh, cut out for him. But what he can do within the period that he's there, uh, combining it with uh, fighting a crucial election in December is another matter. But like I said, it is not just him. I think it's a collective decision of if he can rally uh, his um, uh, brother heads of state to come to the table and listen to Malians. Uh, from the summit, uh, it has uh, come out that uh, they are asking uh, the military to name um, uh, uh, a civilian president, a civilian prime minister uh, uh, by the 15th of uh, September. Well, they should not, I think they should make haste uh, uh, cautiously. They shouldn't come and uh, become irrelevant because by the time you begin to bring uh, imposition or bring conditions that are not attainable, you will be, you will miss the point. Seize the opportunity, talk with the, the, the junta and then listen to the, uh, uh, the feelings of Malians on the ground. It's not, you don't just sit down somewhere outside and then be dictating terms. So you can put sanctions, you can suspend, you can do all that. But again, there is what you call the uh, carrot and stick Mr. approach. Mr. You have to talk with people, the relevant uh, stakeholders inside, to know what they want, to know the, the, the direction to go. It's not in position, it's not by dictation, it's not by, you know, just uh, thinking that um, you can, um, as leaders, uh, decide the fate of, uh, of people without uh, knowing what, what their pains are. Uh, Mr. Jume, in the interest of time, we, 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 really, we really have to miss the point. Uh, we really have to manage what time we have left. Um, I alluded to it earlier. Please, could you speak on how we can change this narrative of uh, the um, sort of lukewarm attitude of Africans? Uh, after a while, you said we lose interest on things that should matter to us. How can we begin to change that uh, behavior? If you can uh, respond in about 40 seconds, that would be highly appreciated. I know it's a short time. I think it's about um, uh, uh, citizen, uh, uh, you know, gov uh, governance. You have to seize that opportunity. It's not about government. You need to hold governments to account. The opposition and civil society, the media, these are all important um, elements of democracy. You can't just leave government to run on their own. If they do it, um, they, it, it, they, will, they will go back to authoritarianism or, or dictatorship. So the opposition of uh, uh, what you call um, alternative view, and you back that with action to, to put governments on their toes. Look All at right. protests, uh, you know, it, it fizzles out after two weeks. It, it doesn't help anything. It Mr. must be consistent, Paul, it must be sustained, I, um, and I, then I, engagement to get the government to do what they are supposed to do. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, in spite of how short uh, the conversation has been, you've been able to share some uh, light on the matter. Thank you so much. Thank you, Felicity. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure.